Hey, hello everybody, it's the Last Raider. We're back with another video, and wow, you know, you thought the sensitivity couldn't get bad? I mean, we we uh, have canceled cops, we've canceled live PD, now we're going after cowboys. And this, this kind of irritates me to no end, because the cowboy is sort of the ultimate frontiersman, if you stop and think about it. He's the guy that goes out into the wilds, <clears throat> herds cattle, and, and he's always a, a symbol of justice to an extent, or usually a, a symbol of ombre, being free and all that other nonsense. But anyway, here we have this going on from, uh, I believe this, yes, this Bounding Into Comics. If y'all haven't, if y'all haven't gotten onto Bounding Into Comics yet, y'all should really check them out because they do a lot of good stuff. They have a lot of good articles on this stuff. And they really keep up with this nonsense. This is where I get most of my stuff <laughs> for my comic book entertainment related stuff related videos. I get it from bounding into comics most of the time, but here we go. Blizzard removes McCree's noose spray in the, in latest overwatch update. This be McCree. McCree is just a cool looking character. I've never played overwatch, but if I did, I'd probably play as McCree. Overwatch players have discovered that a spray used by gunslinger cowboy McCree, which gra which graffitied a cartoon image of a noose in various in-game surfaces, has been abruptly and stealthily removed from the game, courtesy of a new update. The spray, which referenced the classic trope and historical practice of Wild West executions via hangings, was quietly removed from the game following Blizzard's July Overwatch update and was replaced with a new spray featuring a horseshoe bearing the words, Bad Luck. And this is something that I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain to people, and you're going to see in this article... When they attempt to censor something, they try to make it better. Usually what makes something cool, especially to a younger generation, is how bombastic it is. Okay? Uh, older generations, when I was a kid, they hated anime. I, I remember some women, some Karens back in the day before Karens were a thing, would get on to me a kid because I would draw... Uh, anime characters poorly, mind you, that I had seen in other anime, or I would have, you know, manga, and they would say, that just looks like cartoon porn. I can't believe you're letting your kid watch cartoon porn. It's like, no, it's it's Japanese, you idiot. It's a different culture, you know? And when, when you, that was one of the things that I always hammered someone with when they started, you know, complaining about anime. I looked at them, I said, wow, that's amazing. Uh, tell me again how Japanese culture is supposed to convert itself and conform to American Western cultural standards. Uh, I mean, uh, do, do these people's culture not matter? Are you anti-Japanese? Uh, are you anti-Asian? Are you some kind of racist? That usually shut them up. Nowadays, now the, the racist Karens are open about their nonsense. They want Japan to completely conform their entire culture to Western standards. Or their Western. Or their, not even Western standards. Western standard says a chick should be able to go outside in a bikini and look hot. This is more of a, some weird pseudo standard from some subculture. But anyway, you, you see this here. You know, we go from a noose, which is... In the context of the Wild West, the noose was the justice. Okay? We're going to find... If, if some dude had killed a man, they got a posse together and they said, Okay, we're going to go find this murdering son of a bitch. We're going to hang him high. That was justice. We're going to hang him till his feet quit kicking. The noose was at that time a symbol of justice. And in terms of McCreed, and this is the thing you're going to find with SJWs, they have no context. They don't believe in histor They don't believe in history. They have no historical context. They would rather you be taught. I, I remember there's a tweet I was looking at today, where one dude was saying was talking about you know American history and said I really wish they would have just simply talked about the virtues of communism. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're taking actual events from history and wanting to replay in, you're taking a class about history, okay, things that actually happened, which is both the good and the bad of American, of the American history. And you want to replace it with some feel good, utopian, communist, propaganda bullshit. And this is what happens here. Instead of going with, you know, the the hangman's noose, which would be, hey, you know what? Justice is coming. You probably kill one of my buddies, and after I take your butt down, I'm going to spray paint a noose over your area. Yeah, you, you killed my buddy. Uh, I came back and got justice for you to a horseshoe that says, bad luck. 
Where are you, at a casino or something? I mean, <laughs> what what does a bad luck horseshoe going to do to someone? That's not even remotely threatening, and that's what we get. We basically, we take a we take something and we, we take a, um, it's like nerfing weapons that are really good in a video game, okay? you the, There's a thing, when you nerf it, sometimes you nerf it just enough to balance it, but more often than not, a video game company will nerf a gun to the point and this is why they call it nerfing, because when they reduce the firepower or they reduce the capability of the weapon, they inadvertently make it weaker. And sometimes they inadvertently make it so weak, it's practically worthless, and people will chuck the weapon and not even mess with it. Call of Duty does this, where they take the shotguns, because they know that it's a 12-gauge, regardless of what people think, a 12-gauge is a murderous weapon at fairly good range <laughs> okay you can you can kill a man at a pretty decent range you can exceed a handgun's range with a 12 gauge and buckshot uh not to mention going up to a slug you can almost snipe people with it you can almost or like uh, other animals you when you're hunting you can you kill like with deer you don't usually use a whole lot of buckshot when you shoot a deer usually you use deer slugs because that produces less damage and enables you to have more meat but you always have the you always have in Call of Duty. It's like within two feet of the shotgun, oh, you could kill the devil himself if he stepped out of hell. But then after the, about the three foot mark, they're basically little bits of cotton candy, which just bounce off of your uh, enemy harmlessly. It's like, dang, dude, <laughs> you could make. It's it's also like a, a nerf. Also, would be the difference between Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two and Modern Warfare Three. I'm on a tan. I, I'm chasing a rabbit right now. Just, just let me get down. I'm almost done. The, uh, but in there they had the AA-12 in Call of Duty: Modern Warfare 2, and in Modern Warfare 3 they brought the AA-12 back, and everyone was like, "Oh yeah, you know we're gonna use the AA-12 and everything else." What well, they do? They re uh, the original Call of Duty they had a pretty decent damage factor with all the shotguns. Were pretty balanced in terms of damage because with a 12 gauge you're firing basically the same type of round. When you got to the when you when you brought the A12, the A12 was an automatic machine shotgun or an assault shotgun, if you want to call it that. So guys, you could you could literally walk in there with this thing, and it had a retarded fire rate of like 300 something rounds per minute. And you walk in there with this 12 gauge and have like a 30 round mag on it, catch the entire enemy team stacking up around a corner, fixing to just do a mad rush, and just Bum, 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 bum. Just basically Terry Crews, those jokers, like in the Expendables. He just walks in there with the A-12 and just starts sending them bodies flying everywhere. Then the next game comes out. It takes the entire magazine just to kill a single person. And even then, sometimes you'd have to reload. If you missed one round, you'd have to reload the A-12. And they nerfed it so badly, it was it was practically worthless. People then turned over to the Striker because it was it still had a decent fire rate, but still had a good damage factor to it. And you still have the range issue. But like I said, anytime they try to, you know, make something, you know, nicer or more balanced. Uh, my, my thing is, look, if you've got a weapon that's really effing powerful, just put a whole lot of convoluted shit in the way for people to have to get a hold of it. Okay? If you're going to get it, make it more of an in-game kind of weapon. Make people have to earn it over time. You know, that makes, that makes people want to, you know, go through prestige. I was thinking about Call of Duty's prestige mode. I never wanted to go through it. I got the first set done. I was like, eh, prestige just means I've done this. I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to work on updating my weapons here. You know, unlocking all the weapons and all that crap. And I just had a full arsenal and people who were prestige were like, dude, how do you have all these really cool guns in your loadout? I'm like, I took the time and unlocked everything. That's why I don't prestige. Oh, well, well I prestige. You're like, okay, you want a worthless uh, the word, that's like achievements. Achievements, in my opinion, are participation rewards. So it's prestiging. It's like participation. But anyway, back to the article. So anyway, despite this change being rolled out with the latest patch, no mention of the sprays removal was made in the recently released patch notes, probably because people would have pitched a fit if they had found out. While an official reason for the spray's removal has yet to be given, the noose imagery is most likely removed due to the rise of performative hypersensitivity by Activision Blizzard to subjects that could be considered even remotely offensive regardless of context. And there it is. It's regardless of context. Like I said, the McCre if McCreed were... 
if McCreed was running around in a in a hood or something, or even if he was a Nazi to some extent, I could see the hangman's noose being considered in context offensive. But he's a cowboy. If you look at, just start looking up all the people that were, all the um, bandits and outlaws in the West that were usually hung, they were mostly white guys. And in all honesty, they were a lot of times white dudes. Uh, you look at all, just just start picking up bandits that were eventually executed or whatnot. They were usually hung by it. They were usually, they died by hanging. It was considered, a, it was much better because one of the reasons they did hangings a lot of times was it was a lot less bloody than any other method of execution. Now, you could do beheadings and everything else. Um, everybody had rope back in the West. And a lot of times you couldn't find anyone wanting to to waste a bullet on someone who had raped a woman. To them, it was you're not even worth the the penny that I spent on this forty four uh, long Colt round in my forty four revolver. Uh, we're we're not gonna do that, or the forty five long Colt. Uh, we're we're not gonna waste a bullet on you. Go get some rope. At least then we can go wrestle some cat with it later. <laughs> just hang the dude. Like just give him a good hanging. Um, uh, but yeah, it's it's an absolute lack of context. It's also a lack of context when people go after things like the Confederate flag or Confederate monuments. Uh, they go out there and they burn the Confederate flag. I harp on this a lot. Well, like I said, this is another example of someone going after something. We've got another example of that here going down there. Call of Duty Modern Warfare recently saw two instances of sensitivity-based removal. First saw removal of the OK hand gesture emote. No reason was given for that, but it was likely due to its false association with white supremacy thanks to a successful 4chan troll campaign, which put forth the absurd claim. And this is where I would talk about, you know, like the, the Confederate flag. The Confederate flag is the battle flag of a foreign or of a uh, of the Confederate Army. The Klan were not part of the Confederate Army. They were in the South, but they were not part of the Confederate Army. One of the reasons that the Klan went after the Confederate flag so hard and heavy and kept putting it up was a lot of Southerners held on to their Confederate flags in remembrance of lost loved ones or some of their family members who went and fought. Uh, there's a different cultural aspect to the South. It's very warlike to an extent. And even if you're, even if your family, it, it's an honor thing for even if your family member uh, lost in a war, you still respect them for going and fighting, because they still went and they risked their lives for something they believed in. Uh, also, another thing: the top one percent were owning slaves in the in the Confederacy. Go figure. Most of, most of the Confederates' fighting forces were considered of the poor, and, and that was before there was a middle class in the United States. There really wasn't much of one until around in the 20s and 30s and 40s, I believe. So when you have when you're sitting there talking about the the uh, United States was still pretty much decidedly rich, well-off people and somewhat moderately poor people, with a few people that owned a couple of businesses to get by. But most of your fighters, I, I've said this before with uh, Stonewall Jackson, almost all of his troops were barefoot because they could not afford boots. And the Confederacy didn't have the um, <sighs> crap resources to devote to giving all their soldiers boots all the time. There was just not enough industry to do it. Most of the stuff was made by hand. The North had industry to, to outfit their soldiers more properly than the South did. And the South still won almost three times as many battles as they lost. So that tells you something. But there was this big push by the Klansmen to take the Confederate flag. And there was there was significant pushback, even back then and today, to prevent the Confederate flag from being recognized as a hate symbol. However, there are some people who, having the Confederate flag as a symbol they can burn, would rather have would rather give racists agency. And that's what you do when you allow a racist to have some have a symbol that most people are saying, no, we don't want this to be a hate symbol. When you turn that over to them, when you say it is a hate symbol, you give agency to that group of supremacists. You give agency to those people. You give them power. 
And that's what the Klan has always been wanting. They've been wanting the Confederate flag as a symbol of power for them and them alone. Because it is a symbol of Southern culture. All right, Southern culture was defined by the Civil War and by the actions taken by the Confederacy. And a lot of, a lot of Southerners, they kind of show the flag as a symbol of revolution or resistance or, uh, you know, being a rebel. The idea, it's kind of like the Dukes of Hazzard. The re, one of the reasons why the Confederate flag was on top of the car of the Dukes of Hazzard wasn't because the Dukes were racist. They actually had an episode where Jesse jumps onto his, both his boys for being bigoted towards Boss Hogg, even though Boss Hogg deserves it. He says, that's not what the good Lord put us on here for. He told us, he put us on here to rise up against this bigotry. That was actually a line from Uncle Jesse to both the Duke boys, chastising them for not showing hospitality to them, to, to Boss Hogg. And one of the reasons the Confederate flag was up there was because Bo and Luke Duke were rebels. That's what they were doing. They Nine times out of ten, they were on the wrong side of the law fighting against it. I mean, other than the Confederate flag, most of your Antifa members would try to... I, I think if it wasn't for the Confederate flag on top of the General Lee, most of your Antifa members would probably want to say Bo and Luke Duke were on their side. Oh, you know, they're, they're revolutionary just like us. You know, they fighting the law. And Dukes were doing a heck of a lot better job of it than Antifa were. But let's keep going here. I'm rambling on. Earlier this week, a skin named Border War, which sounds awesome, by the way, <laughs> which clad the all-American Wayne D-Day Davis in police gear and a cowboy hat, was renamed. Yeah, this looks... It, it sounds good when you say it's Border War. So we go, we go back on over here. The new name is Home on the Range. <laughs> this is not what you think of when you think, like, what, what a Home on the Range does this guy live in? He lives next to John Rambo in uh, Rambo Last Blood. Is that it? Yeah, man, I know, I know the cartel's coming. We got to walk out there like this all the time. It's, it, it always comes up being stupider. Like I said, censorship always ends up being stupider. Be bombastic in your artwork. If I were to if I were to give advice to people, be bombastic, okay? Be crazy. Do something that's larger than life and and really out there. That makes the best stories. Dirk Pitt and uh, Giardino escaping bad guys in a monster truck in the in a sub-Saharan desert. That sounds awesome. Um, two guys climbing down a drain. T two guys escaping out of a basement. Uh, through a window and quietly sneaking away from everyone. That That's not very entertaining. Again, no reason was given, but one can speculate that it was due to the perceived offense the name would cause to immigrant, to immigrant groups. I seriously doubt most Hispanics have a problem with this. They understand that there's a border. And a lot of Hispanics that I've run into, even some, I, I know a couple of Hispanics who are here illegally in uh, my hometown. They're hard workers. So I don't give a, I don't give a crap as long as you're not out there committing crimes. That's the only problem. And they say the same thing. They said, really, there would not be a problem with immigration if these other idiot Mexicans who come across the border. They use much more colorful language than I will. But they say, <laughs> they go, if these other idiots were not running from the Mexican law and then they come over here like they can just rape and pillage with impunity. He said, you wouldn't have a border wall. He said, we have a border wall. Because you have criminals, he said, that got traction because some idiot come up from Mexico, come to the United States, and caused a whole lot of problems for Americans. He said, now Americans want to put up a border wall. He said, now they, they, want, he said, they want facilities, and they want to start vetting people. He said, and I understand why they want to start vetting people. Mind you, this dude swam the thickest part of the Rio Grande River where it was extremely rough, him and, him and a, a friend of his did, to get across his friends up in St. Louis. I mean, they're awesome dudes. I'm not going to say names. I don't see them that often either for you border agent guys, so <laughs> fuck off. Blizzard also reportedly banning the OK hand gesture from the Overwatch League arena back in April 2019. Yeah, they did this. Esports reporter Rod Balar Basarlu reported that, reported at the time, Blizzard told a fan in the Overwatch League arena they are not allowed to use the OK hand, the OK symbol for its association as a white supremacist symbol after they flashed it on stream and a complaint was made to the OWL account on Twitter. So here we have it again, you know, with the Confederate flag, we're giving agency to white supremacists because you're afraid of them. 
it's just like with the Confederate flag. It's like with the Confederates, when, uh, not Confederates, when people who are in the South, they go, uh, we, we, like, we want that flag to be about heritage, not hate. You have another group that wants it to be about hate. They want it for power. And if they can get a symbol that they can flash at people or a flag that they can wave around that was a writ that is universally recognized in an area. This is what, like I said, they wanted the Confederate flag, the South did, so that they could expand their organization in the South. The Klan wanted this because with that symbol, they could look like it. One of the, one of the reasons one of my family members, uh, who was in the clan at one time, older, much older generation. He said, one of the reasons that, and, and this is what he told me about the Confederate flag. He said, he later got out of it because he realized what was happening. He said the clan, when they took the Confederate flag, they took it because a lot of Southerners were becoming Republican. They recognized that a lot of Southerners were noticing that the Republicans, you know, were having prayer before they would do their meetings. And so a lot of Southerners moved over to the moved over to the Republican side of things because they had a strong Christian faith, and these Republicans were showing, outwardly showing a strong Christian faith. He said that's also why you hear the Klan misquote scriptures in the Bible because they're attempting to appropriate culture. Yes, we're getting there. We appropriate other culture as a racist group to try and incorporate more members, try to recruit more people into their group so they can obtain more power through numbers. This is how racist groups and hate groups work in the United States. Look at BLM. BLM came off as a very good idea. Now it's been taken over by cultural Marxists. They're, they've completely taken the entire concept of it and turned it on its head. Um, same thing with Confederate flag. Same thing with the okay hand gesture, except the okay hand gesture was just 4chan, not just being a prank, but almost proving they could do it. Proving how stupid it was openly. And it was highly successful because it shows this nonsense. Um, as we're going on. Anyway, I guess that's the... Oh, wait, nope. That's the end of the... Uh, that's about the end of the article. But like I said... I think that is a good point. You know, the, the the point of a lot of this nonsense, you know, censorship starts opening up the door to cultural appropriation by the bad people. You know, people that you don't want to have it appropriate to. Look at the Nazis, for instance. The swastika on the Nazis, a lot of people don't know, is a Hindu symbol. I believe it's a Hindu symbol for peace. That's what the Nazis took. That is not by accident. The Nazis took the swastika and they... They put they they took this symbol of peace and they put it up on their flags. It's just like Antifa. Okay? Antifa takes these types of symbols. Uh, they take things like, oh, anti-fascists. We're against anti-fascists while they run around there and act like fascists. BLM, oh, Black Lives Matter, while they go around and they act they actually have killed black people. More black people than the police are probably killing. And you you have and it's the same thing with the clan as well. You have racist groups who go out there and they take a benign symbol and then they prey on people who are pro censorship. And when you take that when you censor something, you give agents you you are surrendering that symbol to bad people, to people who do not deserve it. The Confederate flag is remembered by Southerners as a symbol of sacrifice that was made by some of their family members. Yes, they lost the war, but you'd be hard-pressed to find any Japanese... And I, I would say this, go to Japan, ask them how they feel about the Japanese soldiers who fought and died in that war. They won't apologize for their people. They will tell you, uh, the, those Japanese men that fought in World War II, they were brave men. They gave their lives for their country. It's the same thing with the southern states. It they don't believe they don't sit there and say, "Well, you know, we, we have this for for some revolution or some racist reasons." They look at that flag because they say, "Our family members, many of them fought in those wars. There were young men who went and fought there. It was a war where they went and fought. We want to remember the sacrifice that they made and remember the harshness of war." 
so that we don't repeat the same mistakes again. Instead, you've got dumb senators who, you know, pro-censorship idiots who want to take away stuff and move, move them from the public eye so that racists can take them later on and, and use them for their own propaganda. Anyway, folks, I guess what I'm trying to say is censorship censorship is a gateway to false propaganda. I am the last Raider, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you're new, and hit that bell for notification. I try to bring out more videos on a daily basis now. And uh, I've got some stuff I'm bringing out here, you know. I've got videos, I've got an opinion on things, and I'd like to share it with you if you find that entertaining. Anyway, uh, stay safe, stay frosty, and I'll see you guys in the next video.